week one in the books. Let's recap what happened. I think after week one, yes, I know everybody's going to... The funny thing is this. I'm just going to flat out tell you this right now. You don't want to get overreactive, but the people that... that I guarantee you this. The people that always say it's only one, week one or it's only one week are usually the people who lost that week. And I understand you want to keep the optimism going. Is that really how I feel about it, though? So... There were a lot of games. A lot of games I predicted the outcome to be incorrect. If I'm looking at it right now, I, I predicted one, two, three. No, excuse me. I only predicted two correct. I was two for six. Technically, I'm going to say two for five. The reason why I'm saying that was the game I want to talk about, the Johnny versus David Sutton game where I took Johnny. Once Mark Andrews was inactive, to me, and that that happened right before kickoff, I think Saturday night or something like that, I knew for a fact Johnny wasn't winning. Obviously, I didn't mention that in the chat, but David Sutton um, goes out without Cooper Cup, finds a way to get it done, courtesy of the Cheetah, who literally was one point away from getting 40. That's the type of shit you want to see. Not bad. Congratulations on the victory there, Mr. David Sutton. This next game I want to talk about was one that was a shocker. And I don't think it was a shocker because I thought a team was bad. I just couldn't believe what they were throwing out there. And they got the job done. They were projected to get 95. They got 116 points. And with a lot of promising young superstars on the bench, nope, Allen defeated Harsh, which... Was it? Mm. I don't know if I want to call it an upset because I really thought mind games were being played. There were no mind games. Maybe Allen's living rent free in my head with this lineup. I don't know. This one certainly was a little ridiculous. B Magic wins 110 to 86. Now, when I look at the recap of that matchup, I think one thing stands out to me the most, and it was just guys did not get the job done on Paul's team. I thought Amon Ross St. Brown and Jalen Waddle were set up for explosive games. They did not have explosive games. They had – I'll get him to more of my analysis because I know this is the recap. Justin Fields did not have a good game. Yeah. Matchup – oh, they give us matchup ratings and A-. minus. B Magic did exceed expectations. He beat his projection by one point. Congratulations on that, B Magic. I think the biggest takeaway here is Calvin Ridley is back. And if that is the case, a guy who got taken in the four, start of the fourth round is going to probably return second round value. So congratulations on that pick. Uh, okay. I did not expect this to be a blowout, but I am high on one of these teams. Patrick, now granted, 41 points from Dallas was the highest scoring player in the entire week. Congratulations. You almost beat the champion by 100 points. That is impressive. Way to go there, buddy. Happily married, and now with week one victory. The A-team did not show up against Andre Jones. Andre Jones, I did not pro I did not project him to, to win, but again, I do not think this is a fluky team at all. I actually do like some of the pieces on the Andre Jones team. Bottom line, when it comes down to it, when your quarterback gets you three points, you're probably not winning the week. And it looks like there are some injuries being dealt with as of right now. We'll have to see how that thing goes. And da, 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 da. last but not least, the game of the week, it was either put up or shut up. And it would look really bad if I talked so much crap about a team and I did not get the job done. It is only week one. We are not victory lapping, by the way. I have receipts. I did send Mr. Cryer a text message saying that I'm not victory lapping. I'll see you in December because the one guy who I was scared to death on, uh, I'm going to tell you everybody right now, if Christian Watson played in that Chicago Bears game, those two touchdowns that Romeo Dobbs got, two of them are going to Christian Watson, and I can guarantee you he goes over 100 yards and catches both of them in the end zone. Now, someone might say, would that have been enough? Who knows? Who knows? Probably not, though. But, um, yeah, what a way to kind of start off the season. Now, 
waiver wire. All right, everybody knows that week one is probably one of the weeks where you gotta, you have to bid aggressively on. I'm a firm, firm believer if there's a guy you really like, and I know it's only one week, but this is this is one of the most important weeks. Now, granted, because everybody's on the same wavelength, they save their money because they want to wait for that running back who is going to be the next man up type of guy because everybody's like, oh, running backs are going to get volume, and that's always the position that's in demand. Fair enough, but I also think that you have to be aggressive early on. First guy that went a whopping $83 for Justice Hill. This went to David, who was the owner of J.K. Dobbins. So it's almost like a handcuff situation. But I'm going to be quite honest with you. I think this is a huge overpay. Justice Hill, the weird thing about Justice Hill, he's been on this roster for four years now. I would have thought a guy who's a third string running back would have probably either been, and has not been a starter on this team, a, would have been cut at least two years ago. B, probably would have been out of the league. I think the only reason why they've ever kept this guy on their roster is because every single Ravens starting running back gets hurt. Gus Edwards has done it multiple times. J.K. Dobbins, rest in peace. He's done it multiple times. I am trying to remember, oh, and real life, rest in peace, I think. I'm going through the motions of the Ravens backfield in 2019 because that was Justice Hill's rookie year, I believe. I'm drawing a blank, but I know he wasn't the starter. He was playing behind somebody. I don't think it was rest in peace in real life to Alex Collins. I don't know if that was the guy. Somebody's got to help me out here because I don't know who the hell that guy was. It wasn't Gus Edwards, though. Gus Bus was playing behind somebody else. Somebody's got to help me. And I, I don't have time to go through this because I'm doing a segment. But um, he never was able to overtake any of those guys. The only reason is he's been healthy. That's the only reason why this guy is rostered on an NFL team. He's been in practice. He knows the playbook. But right immediately, yes, he had the two touchdowns. Yes, Gus Edwards is not a healthy guy. And he's still recovering from an injury. But... Melvin Gordon just got reacted. Yes, David, I know the, the name you don't want to hear. As ridiculous as it sounds, Melvin Gordon is probably the best choice to be a starting running back on this team. I think Justice Hill offers a lot of explosiveness, but am I really that excited about him? No. I understand losing J.K. Dobbins. You should feel like, oh, like uh, handcuff situation, this, that, the other. Yes. Everybody's going to bid aggressively on the next man up mentality. I don't I don't see Justice Hill by season end still keeping this gig. Oh, uh, no, wrong guy. I was thinking of Buck Allen was the running back I was thinking of, but it was another guy in there too. I can't remember the name. Anyway, um, $83 for Justice Hill. It's a running back. So the demand for a price yeah, or, or position, I get it. What would I give this grade? Considering the overpay, I'll give it a C. I'm not going to go C minus. I'm not going to go C plus. I don't know if he's going to return that that cap. Um, good news for you. I don't think it matters because I think you got Kerwin Williams on your roster. So you might just cut bait with Justice Hill and not even need him. Speaking of, another running back went high. Zach Moss went for $40. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to be very lazy right now. I'm not going to check on my desktop. I'm not going to check what the next bid for Matt, Zach Moss was. Uh, spoiler, not spoiler, but I will confirm that I did have a bid, but it was probably under like $10. I got to be honest with you. I don't think any of the Colts running backs are going to have any value. Deion Jackson was only valuable with dump off quarterbacks. That's not Anthony Richardson's game. Zach Moss might be the best between the tackles runner of the bunch, but he is a guy that falls into the category of you're either get if he doesn't get a touchdown, He's getting single-digit points. Flat out, I, I don't see any value, real-life value, in any of these Colts running backs to pay $40 harsh in a position that I'm going to throw the same shit back at you. I don't even think you needed to spend $40 on Zach Moss. This one, I... And considering that he's still recovering from an injury, this one I'm going to give a D on. 
I just don't see the upside here in Zach Moss. I, I don't. Jonathan Taylor coming back or not coming back too, I think this would have been a, a wasted of a pick. The only reason why I'm not giving it an F is because I do think out of all the backs that they have, if you're if you're playing the comparing game between him and the other running backs, yes, he is the best between the tackle and the runner. Yes, he is probably the best suited for the goal line package, but his stat line every week might be 11 for 56 and like no touchdowns. And at that point, you already have Jamal Williams, so I would feel more confident in Jamal Williams as the RB2 on your roster than Zach Moss. And that is with Alvin Kamara coming back, by the way. Next guy, okay, that gets bid $29 for Kendrick Bourne. Now, I could have gotten him for free, but I cut him for Gerald Everett before the kickoff games. I actually do like Kendrick Bourne a lot. Yes, Johnny and David, if you're listening to this part, oh, here goes Nick again, sucking his dick of the players. Listen up for a second. You know my stance on Juju Smith-Suster. Garbage. Okay? Let me defend myself for a second. Next, Devontae Parker. Not healthy. That leaves the Patriots with Kendrick Bourne. Keyshawn uh, Booty, who I actually like a lot, by the way, and Demario Douglas. Two rookies, a veteran presence, and if you want to throw Hunter Henry, those are those are the guys who Mac Jones is throwing to. Now, here's the counter argument I'm going to hear from David and Johnny. Dude, I don't want to invest in any New England pass catcher. Pump the brakes on that for a second. Last year, Jacoby Myers was a flex play. He actually had a lot of good, valuable games. Hey, he was a floor play, though, right? He was between 8 to 10, and his upside was maybe 17 points. Jacoby Myers isn't there. There's no other reliable targets. He had 11 targets in a game where they were, you know, almost came back with. I understand this is not a pass-first team, but you actually have a legit offensive play caller now. It's a lot of wishful thinking. I actually think he will return flex value. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say it right now. I don't think he's a bad, bad wide receiver. I think the reason why he was MIA last year was they bought in Devontae Parker and Jacoby Myers played the slot. Kendrick Bourne is more of a slot receiver. And the one thing we know about the New England Patriots, they are the one team that does not push their rookies to the limit. They, Belichick is such a boomer that it's old school mentality. Veterans are going to get on the field. I actually do think that Kendrick Bourne, now granted, we've seen this before, but if you remember two years ago, Kendrick Bourne was playable in home games. It was weird. He would go off in home games and would literally be non-existent on the road. This is a guy who has chemistry with Mac Jones. I am not I am not saying wide receiver one, wide receiver two, but flex play, absolutely. And I actually think he's a lot better than some of the flex plays that I'm seeing out there right now. So with that being said, $29 for a receiver who's been in the league for a while, da 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 da, da and wishful thinking. I'm going to give this, I'm not going to be bullish. I'm not going to be bullish. I'm going to give it a C, okay? Because it, it didn't cost me a lot. But again, is there upside here? Probably not. But it is a floor play, and he is a guy you could start on a weekly basis. Next, another New England Patriot by me. I am just going with the veterans that aren't damaged goods. Hunter Henry, I actually liked. We loved him in, in uh, San Diego. The reason why he hasn't, in my opinion, been a top 10 tight end is because the John U. Smith splits, they signed both of them the same year, and it canceled each other out. I am not worried about Mike Gusecki, who is a, pretty much a jag at this point in his career. Hunter Henry has shown flashes when he's been given the opportunity. He's a great tight end. He is somebody that Belichick and the system can rely on. By upon and again, I am team buck tight end for $19. Hunter Henry, can he finish as a top 10 tight end? He, it's definitely in his range of outcomes, but then again, top 10 tight end isn't saying much. Um, it is an offense that is very boring and dumb. I get it. This you can throw whatever you want out there. I'm if $19, I'm gonna give it a C. Next, Melvin Gordon for $10. This I like, not because I've had. Melvin Gordon fever in the past, David Sutton, and Paul, I know you spent $10, but 
He's the only running back on this roster with legit NFL workload starter experience. The only issue with Melvin Gordon is the fumbles. But I would be more worried about Gus Edwards getting going than Justice Hill. If Gus Edwards looks like the guy that people thought they were getting three years ago, Melvin Gordon probably going to go back in the practice squad, probably go somewhere else. But when Melvin Gordon has got the opportunity, even last year when he was in Denver before they cut him, they cut him because he has had fumbling issues. $10, it doesn't cost you shit, and there is a – he could probably take over the backfield. Paul, I'm going to give you a B plus. No, 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 no. B minus. B plus would, would pretty much tell me it guaranteed. But for, 10, for the $10 waiver price, good job. Indianapolis D for $10. I know they looked good against – who the fuck did they look good against? Oh, they have Houston this week, I think. Um, When you're bidding on a defense, you're, you're playing them for that week. Um, If you're – from a weekly standpoint, I'll, I'll actually say it's a B plus. No, B. I, I, I can't go that high. Sorry, I'm looking at the transactions. What else do we got here? Cleveland D playing for the week. Uh, $8 against Kenny Pickett without Deontay Johnson. Pat Firemove. You never know if he's going to play or not. Um, that's another B. Jared Goff as a backup. I, I don't think you needed to bid on Jared Goff, but you like playing two quarterbacks, okay? Allen Robinson for $1. Well. Okay. David Sutton, you've got a lot of guys. Here. Wow, this segment is going way overboard. Okay. Sorry. Bottom line is, Allen Robinson in the slot actually might rejuvenate his career. You heard what I said. Chance of that happening, like 20%. But anyway, for $1, I honestly, I'll, I'll give this a B plus. I don't know if you're ever going to feel confident starting Allen Robinson, but he cannot play on the outside anymore. This was never a guy who could separate. I remember... When he went to the Rams, I think a lot of people were, like, excited, and they were like, holy fuck, this guy is dust. Um, and you got another guy who is now probably going to play a lot of slot roles or underneath Robert Woods. Um, here's the counter argument that I, I cannot flat out, I don't have an answer for. I'll play lawyer a little bit. If I spent $29 on Kendrick Bourne, who's been a veteran in the league for a while now, and he got Robert Woods for virtually nothing, I'm going to give the Robert Woods a B plus. That's an argument I don't have an argument for. I'm literally wishful thinking with Kendrick Bourne. My only thing is I think Kendrick Bourne actually has had flashes in New England. Robert Woods has not looked good. He didn't look good last year. Maybe that was a Tannehill thing, but he got targeted a lot, but it's a lot of underneath stuff. He's a floor play. He's a flex. At best, maybe. My issue with Robert Woods is, I don't know, by season end, are they going to start playing guys like John Mechie? Are they going to have Tank Dell get targeted a little bit more? And I think Nico Collins, they really have to see if if what they have is legit. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't think he's any good. But if the Texans are going to get shitted on every game, he might look good because of the garbage time stuff. Next. Uh, Rob Coffey gets the Giants defense for free against the Arizona Cardinals. A plus. Like that move. Also, Josh Downs. This is a move I love a lot. Not that you needed him, Coffey, but I'll give this a B. He might be the best fit for Anthony Richardson in this offense. You know how I feel about Josh Reynolds, okay? Best bid of the day goes to Coffey for free for Josh Reynolds. A plus. Uh, who cares about the guy who's going to come back in Jameson Williams? Josh Reynolds is a legit baller. A plus. And then Zong Conqueror, Detroit. Whoa, whoa. All right, Harsh. You're believing in the defense or because Seattle lost both their linemen. I don't know, but it's for free. And it's an, uh, but it's C plus. I don't, I don't buy Detroit. Okay, I know I talked a lot. Bottom line is this. My favorite bid, obviously, is Josh Reynolds. No, no, no. If I honestly had to say my favorite bid for the price point, meaning it didn't cost you anything, I believe it's Josh Downs. I think Josh Downs is probably the best fit for this offense. It didn't cost him anything. I actually like his upside a lot. If we're talking upside, I think Downs was the best bid for nothing. If we're talking floor for cost, I would say probably Melvin Gordon or Robert Woods. 
Um, that's about it. I'm going to get do a new segment. Eventually, I might actually transition this into either like a video or like a TikTok, um, but like an appropriate TikTok, obviously. Um, game balls. Week one game ball. Now, I thought long and hard about this because there was a lot of guys on my uh, week one game ball. By the way, what's going to happen is, I don't know. Let me know honest honest opinion for the league. Because I think what I really want to start doing now is I, I want to get like an actual football every year to go along with the trophy. And on that football, I'm going to have a Sharpie and I'm going to write each week's uh, game ball, like who won it. And then that way the champion could kind of hold it and remember and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that week and this week. Da, 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 da. I think it might be a cool idea. Um, so let me know what you think about it. I'm just trying some new things out. But my game ball this week, as a commissioner, what I saw, there's a lot of things I expected. I expected the Patrick team to dominate. I'm not going to toot my own horn at all. So I'm not going to mention that shit at all because I know it's going to piss off a lot of people. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but after week one, I, there was a lot of upsets. Uh, uh, upsets. Wow. What? What language is that? Upsets. Uh, what I meant to say was this. Uh, Andre taking down the A-plus team also could have been it. But I've got to be honest. I am done. Okay? I, I, I am done questioning this man's methods because whatever happens, and it's a lot of mind games. Like, he, lives, he might live rent-free in my head with his fucking line of decisions. Because every time I question something... Uh, he proves me – it's almost like a scientist who discovers something and the other scientists in the room are like, you can't mix that chemical with this. It will never work. And then voila, it just works out. The game ball goes to a guy who if I thought for sure Puka Nakua and Jordan Love were not starting week one. But the game, game ball for week number one definitely, in my opinion, goes to Alan Williams. Good job, Alan. Yeah, good job, Alan. Oh, really? Good, Alan. All right. All right, big guy. I'm issuing a statement. This is specifically geared towards you and you only for two reasons. Okay. Last year, I made a really stupid statement. And David Sutton got $100 off of me. Statement, as we recall, was I thought that the New Orleans defense was going to finish number one overall. I was way off on that. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity, buddy. We're going to make a side bet. It could be for $50 or uh, peanut butter master blast at Sonic, please. You know I love those. Let me know which one you want. Oh, or 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 Night at Esquina Latinas, one or the other. Okay, those are the three options. Okay, if I win, if you win, name whatever. I don't care. You know who I'm talking about, Rashad White. Everybody wants to talk about volume is king, but that shit doesn't matter when you're fucking garbage, dude. I'm sorry, dude. This guy sucks. This guy, this guy is a horrible. Okay. I'm going to tone it down for a little bit. I'm going to tone it down for a little bit. <clears throat> this is what I really want to say. He's not very good between the tackles. In fact, when I watch his film, and dude, just watch his film, you can't teach a guy who's scared to play football not to be scared and run between the tackles. Dude, he fell down in front of contact about a million times. They are trying to use him between the tackles, and it just doesn't work. I am very sorry. The only defense I will give him is that their line is horrible. This is this was the knock on Reggie Bush coming out of college. They didn't think he could run between the tackles, and he was like a gadgety. Da, 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 da. But the funny thing was, when Reggie Bush went to Miami, he ran between the tackles really, really good. What I am saying is this. I am very confident that Rashad White is not going to be an RB2. Hell, I don't even think he's going to be an RB3, in my personal opinion. Now, this is not because I have Sean Tucker. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is wishful thinking. Out of all the running backs on that roster, Rashad White, Sean Tucker, Chase Edmonds, and Keyshawn Vaughn, only one guy 
I think is the best suited to run between the tackles and actually be a lead back in that system. That's Sean Tucker. I'm putting my money on Sean Tucker to do that. Rashad White can still get his catches. But that value, that quote-unquote workload, that 19 touches that he had, is soon going to go way down to, by season then, I would not be shocked if he's only touching the ball seven times a game. That's a statement. Now, here's the wager. You're going to go, all right, Nick, not enough talking shit about Rashad White. I don't like him. Here's the bet I'm going to make. I just made a waiver claim on Kendrick Bourne, okay? You obviously are very high on Rashad White. Head-to-head -head right now by season's end, fantasy points-wise, who finishes more, Kendrick Bourne or Rashad White? I am putting a waiver wire guy I just claimed. I, I am making a bold statement here, but I believe Kendrick Bourne by season end will have more fantasy points than Rashad White. Let me know if you want to take this deal because it's on the table. Well, it's got that college feeling again. Two buds meet at college, and now they become sworn enemies on the battlefield. Alex Matika versus Paul Percall. Both these guys do not want to go 0-2. One would be devastated. The other knows if he goes 0-2, Championship curse might be a thing. And it makes perfect sense because this started with Harsh, by the way. First to worst. How am I going to see this breaking down? Lamar Jackson versus Justin Fields. Now, <clears throat> Fields looked awful. Lamar didn't play his best, but I also think that they ran the ball in, I believe, like three times. See if that's correct. Yeah, six points, right? 169 passing yards, six rush attempts for 38, and a fumble loss and an interception is probably the worst game you'll ever see Lamar Jackson have. Um, here's my concern Mark Andrews not being out there affects him like it did Patrick Mahomes. Now, Mahomes is fine regardless, but I don't think Lamar is. The one thing that Lamar does very, very well is that he hits his first read is the seam over the middle of the field. And when he doesn't have his go to guy over the middle of the field, he I don't want to say panics, but he's got to look for other options, which is why Zay Flowers had like 10 catches or whatever. Everything was underneath. They couldn't hit any long balls. And the Houston defense did a good job. If you, if you saw the way they were pressuring Lamar, they sent everything right up the middle. That way they could block his vision over the middle of the field because they know that's where he likes to go. And I think D'Amico Ryan had a good game plan for him. Now against a Bengals defense, that does not scare me at all. Um, they're literally the definition of an average defense. They're not shitty, but they're not good. And he takes on uh, Justin Fields on the other end, who travels to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's defense, I got to be honest with you, Tampa Bay's defense was getting to Kirk Cousins. Uh, every time I was watching Red Zone, man, like they were putting the pressure on. Todd Bowles can send the heat. He likes to send zone blitzes as well. Um, Fields looked absolutely awful against the Green Bay Packers. Now, a lot might might say to yourself, well, maybe it's because his first read was DJ Moore and the whole Jair Alexander shadowing him, this, that, the other. I don't know. The one thing I do know is you can't play man against Justin Fields and the Bucs don't play man. It's, it's a lot of zone coverage. So Fields, I think, is going to run wild in this one. Lamar Jackson, I'm going to be honest with you, Alex, if Mark Andrews is not active for this game, I'm going the Paul side on Justin Fields. I think both Lamar and Justin Fields might be pedestrian through the air, but I can see I can see Justin Fields probably breaking a long one for a touchdown here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's gonna need to, man, because if he can't if if this whole connection between him and DJ Moore doesn't happen this this week, panic button is being pushed. Bottom line, if Justin Fields, I'm sorry, if Lamar Jackson doesn't have Mark Andrews, I'm taking Fields. If he does, I'm taking Lamar. I know it's a cop-out answer, but I gave you my honest evaluation. Jerry Judy, if he plays, gets a very friendly matchup against the Washington Commanders. Rashid Shahid also gets a start with Deontay Johnson being down. 
And then we're going through Amon Ross St. Brown and Jalen Waddle. All right, let's talk about this. Judy against Washington, I do think that he might he's got he's going to eventually have to be this team's number one wide receiver, but I saw what happened with Denver's offense last year. I didn't want any part of it. I don't want any part of it this year. I just think that it's it's pretty much the same ingredients that that happened last year, with the exception of these running backs. Next, Rashid Shahid. Okay, you're gonna love this, Matica. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now, Rashid Shahid. If you loved uh, Devin Duvernay last year, who actually sucks, you're gonna love Rashid Shahid, who's actually pretty freaking good. This dude, by the way, love the number uh, change on number 22. He's a guy I, I've had in my sleeper list because for our league, he's on return yards and he's a deep threat. And he's also, I don't want to say a valuable offense, but he could eventually be the number two once Michael Thomas gets hurt. I love this guy, but I don't think it's enough firepower to compete with Amon Ra and Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle against New England is going to rack up a lot of catches. And the reason why I'm saying this is I don't think Belichick can stop Tyreek Hill, but he's going to try his damn best to put like three guys on him, which means Waddle's going to be open over the middle of the field, right? I'm going to St. Brown at home. Okay, I know the two touchdowns didn't happen. It might happen this game, Paul. But again, this was my concern with Amon Ra St. Brown. People were trying to put him in the top five conversation for fantasy receivers. He's top 10, maybe. He's not bad. He's good but he's very, very consistent flurry. Nick Chubb gets the Pittsburgh Steelers. Saquon Barkley gets the Cardinals. Barkley will bounce back. This is not a great matchup for Nick Chubb by any means, but I think he'll get the job done. Joe Mixon, I don't want any part of that idiot. Oh, and Alexander Madison is in a terrible matchup against the Phil. Oh, give me, give me Matica, dude. Dude, I, Paul, I, 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 talent-wise, I hate both those running backs, and I do not like their matchup. Give me Chubb. Give me Barkley. Um, not not a lot to talk about there. Goddard, who was a no show, which which was surprising because I I they took out uh, Devonta Smith and, and AJ Brown. They limited them, so I figured something was going to be on open underneath. But Travis Kelsey, if he plays, and by the way, Paul, after seeing what happened in Kansas City on opening night, I think they're going to have to rush him. Give me Kelsey. DeAndre Swift and Rashad Bateman, Terry McLaurin, and Traylon Burks. DeAndre Swift is probably going to get the start. By the way, Matica, here's my uh, theory. I think the Eagles running back situation is going to be a pain in the fucking ass all year. I think the reason Swift didn't do much was because it was raining, and he doesn't look like the guy who can kind of run the ball in rain, which is why they use Gainwell. And look, Gainwell got hurt, so I think they were like trying to project, protect DeAndre Swift. The fact that DeAndre Swift is going, he's going to be at home against an overrated Vikings team. Love this matchup. Especially if he gets starter looks. Love it. Rashad Bateman, unfortunately, dude, I love Rashad Bateman. I think he has to go to a different team. Um, I think he's a very good wide receiver, but I thought there was, he might not be 100%, by the way. He's a good wide receiver. Love him to death. But it looks like Zay Flowers is, is by default going to be the number one target. And he's kind of an afterthought. I, f I love the guy, too. I have him in a dynasty league. But I think he needs to get off of Baltimore, go to a different team, and then prove to the world why he's actually a really good wide receiver. My honest opinion. So Bateman hitting seven points? No. Swift will go over that 10. Terry McLaurin? Well... Didn't really do much in a favorable matchup. Now he gets what appears to be an unfavorable. Uh, we don't know who Pat Sertan's going to be on. McLaurin or Dotson? I have no idea. Traylon Burks against the Chargers. Well, the Chargers got smoked by Tyreek Hill. So if you're looking at that, and can Traylon Burks go over the top? Obviously not good as, as good as Tyreek Hill, but if I'm Mike Rabel, there's got to be something you saw in the defense to say, you know what, there's something we can key on here. So maybe, but I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I don't like Bateman, I'm going to take the workload with Swift and go with Matica. Buffalo's D against the Vegas Raiders at home, very good matchup. And then Monday night, 
the best defense in the entire league goes against the Carolina Panthers. This is a clear-cut draw. Bryce Young didn't look good. He doesn't have anybody to throw to. His best receiver is Hayden Hurst, for crying out loud. Buffalo I got embarrassed by my New York Jets. Let's not talk about the Jets. Um, I think this is both a draw. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Bottom line, it comes down to this. Paul, I feel like every time I'm looking at your matchup, not including Kelsey, the first three players I name, I'm very confident in, and then everything else, I, I am not very confident in. You need Travis Kelsey to play this week. Because I know you don't want to be 0-2, and, and I know the champ doesn't want to be 0-2. As far as the champ's concerned, I don't like the starting receivers. I think the flexes, and real life, like, it's funny, because you have, <laughs> I had both those guys last year, Swift and Baton. Let me down. Um, anyway. Wow. Let's say Kelsey plays and Mark Andrew plays for Matica. Then how do I feel about this? Man, this is this is an even matchup. If that happens, you know what? Guys, I'm really sorry. I don't have I don't have a good take. If Mark Andrews does not play, give me the Paul per call side. If Mark Andrews plays, but Kelsey plays, this is where shit gets really interesting. I think the running backs. Oh, by the way, Matica, if Judy doesn't play, oh my god. Wow. I, I, I just shit my pants. I'm looking at these. Oh, God. You know what? You know what? I like... I. You know what? Screw it. We're going with the curse. Paul, you'll go one and one. Well, 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 well. Gentlemen, this is another 0-2 or oh, 0 and one matchup where both these teams, I know for a fact... Do not want to go 0-2. Do, uh, I repeat, do not want to go 0-2. I think both teams lost. I think the more disappointing loss was on the harsh side because I, I expected huge things from that lineup, and they did not deliver. The Johnny side of things, I was not confident picking him, and, and then the whole Mark Andrews thing happened, and this, that, the other. Well, it looks like we've reconstructed the roster on the Jonathan J. Fresh Ahern train. Um, Yes, yes. And the harsh lineup. Oh, come on. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that, bro. Oh, my God. I can't believe you did it. You son of a bitch, you did it. You did it. You'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, One team I was very high on after the draft. The other I was not. Um, So... It, they really, really need to catch a ground here. All right. Justin Herbert versus Josh Allen. Before I get to Josh Allen, I want to talk about Herbert for a second. Okay. In a game that went 34-36, 22 fantasy points is good, but it's not great. And I don't think it's Herbert being a bust. I just think that their rushing attack with their line is so effective that they're actually very efficient at the at the goal line, where it's like, fuck it, we're just going to hand off the ball. Last year, I thought Herbert didn't deliver because all of his weapons were hurt. This is against the Tennessee Titans that have a good defense. They're going to have to travel. I love Josh Allen in this spot. Josh Allen looked so bad against the New York Jets, and he plays them bad every time. Uh, he's projected 26. It's against the Vegas Raiders. Uh, Max Crosby is the only guy, really, he's going to have to look for. Uh, on a Bills note, Tyree Wilson looks like a freak athlete, but he gets off the ball very, very slow. And against a guy like Josh Allen, who kind of panics at times when there's pressure, he might not have to panic at all. My bold statement here, Johnny, is that Josh Allen might go for four total touchdowns. I know you love to hear it. You'll love to see it. So I'm going Josh Allen over Justin Herbert. DJ Moore, Nico Collins, DK Metcalf, Mike Williams. Here we go. DJ Moore. Well, 
my prediction was has been true so far, but it's only one week. I, I will not jump to conclusions yet on DJ Moore, Johnny. But the only thing that I will say is two targets for 25 fucking yards. Are you kidding me? Now say what you want. Jair Alexander. Jair Alexander. I don't care, dude. This is the guy you bought in to kind of be your quote-unquote guy. This this is what DJ Moore is. In my opinion, I think he's boomer bust. He's more boomer bust wide receiver three than he is wide receiver two. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how Tampa goes. Here's my thing with Tampa. The usage is going to indicate what he really is. If he gets targets up the ass, then you can say it was a Jair Alexander problem. Like if, like if he gets 10 to 11 targets, I'm not even talking about production. If he gets 10 to 11 targets, but let's say he gets like seven catches, 80 yards and a touchdown. Okay, maybe DJ, DJ Moore is a low-end boomer bust wide receiver too. But if he gets four targets and gets like four for 80 in a touch, the guy is boomer bust wide receiver three. I, I'm not be, I, he. This guy used to be my boy. He's kind of dead to me at this point now. This is a favorable matchup where the Tampa Bay secondary becomes very leaky because they send too many guys. And if you block one of them, some guy can get open deep downfield. But I don't know how they're going to use DJ Moore yet. Will he break that 11 points? Johnny, I think he will this week. If he doesn't this week, uh, dude, the fat lady's coming out. Uh, Nico Collins. Well, I know you started. Uh, funny thing was I would have benched Elijah Moore for Nico last week. The Houston Texans, this might actually be a sleeper. Houston Texans were uh, attempted the fifth most passes, and they were neutral in, in uh, pass rate which is a lot more than any of us expected. Do they let do they let CJ Stroud just sling it every freaking game? If that's the case, the 11 targets that you saw right there, dude, he might wind up with that. Right now it looks like Nico and Robert Woods are the two guys he has the most comfortable rapport with granted. It's only one week, Nikki. It's only one week, Nikki. But I don't like Nico Collins game at all, but if you're going to tell me this guy's going to get 10 to 11 targets a week, Realistically, I think he gets, average-wise, when we look back at it, I think he gets seven targets a week. But that motherfucking boy, Nico. I love Nico. Against the Indianapolis Colts, who I don't think are a good defense. This is a bold fucking statement I'm about to say. Nico Collins scores a touchdown, but I think it's like five for 60 and a touch. It gets the job done. Flip side, DK Metcalf against Detroit. Um, with Tyler Lockett ailing, uh, he let me down harsh. That was not the game I thought was going to happen. Three for 47 in touchdown. DK Metcalf, I think a lot of his value is always like uh, predicated on touchdowns. Can he get it against Detroit? Absolutely. I want to talk about Big Mike. Big Mike Williams. So, my stance on Mike Williams is this. Mike Williams, for as much times as the, oh, by the way, the Chargers are 50-50, 50% run, 50% pass. Pretty impressive. I do think you can take advantage of the Titans defense deep. And I also think that the Titans have a very, very stingy run defense. I told you this about Jamal Williams last week. So I think Herbert's going to have to rely on the deep ball a little bit. Uh, I, again, I think Keenan Allen and, and him are going to be busy. If Mike Williams doesn't get taken out of that game, I don't know what his numbers are like. The only thing I will say, though, is the playbook design is a lot different when Keenan Allen is active versus when he's not, when Mike Williams is on the field. He will always be the secondary option, but I do think they'll connect here for a touchdown in this one. Only because I don't think they're going to have any success running ball. Oh, and by the way, if Eckler is definitely out of this game, Keenan Allen is in play, Mike Allen, is, oh my God. Mike Williams is in play, and uh, anybody else not named Quentin Johnson is in play. Uh, yeah, I said it. Wow. So if I'm projecting DK Metcalf and Mike Williams to get a touchdown or, and DJ Moore and Nico Collins to get a touchdown, I would say a draw, but... Which guy do I think can put up the most out of all of them? It's got to be Metcalf. I think this is a really good matchup. Um, and I think he's the only healthy guy on this team. Give me the harsh side. Christian McCaffrey and player not to be named. 
taking on Damian Pierce and Jamal Williams. Damian Pierce against Indy. Uh, we have the yellow flag caution here, Razor Dame. This is why I was not big on the guy. I didn't like that matchup against Baltimore. He's the lead back, but Devin Singletary took took over on third downs. They were mixing in Daryl Ogumbalambe and Mike Boone even got action. What does that mean? Damian Pierce is starting to fall in the category of guys that I do not like, and it's touchdown or bust. That was my biggest concern with Damian Pierce. I'm not liking this. Um, but this is a favorable matchup. Speaking of touchdown or bust, Jamal Williams, he is in a favorable matchup against the Carolina Panthers. So you got two guys that are touchdown or bust in favorable matchups. Okay, okay. Christian McCaffrey against the Rams. Need I say more? Rashad White. Okay, that 10 points. Okay, Yahoo will probably next week, they're going to correct that to six. McCaffrey will probably go off for 20, 20 plus. Can it be enough to hold off Damian Pierce and Jamal Williams? I think it can. Mark Andrews. Tyler Higby. All right. Well, Andrews was limited at practice. I guess it's a good sign. Tyler Higby. What a dude. Terrible. I did not, first of all, I did not think, Puka Nakua, I could see being a star. Tutu Atwell, hell no. But the only reason why I think that happened was that Seattle played a lot of zone coverage, and the zones are going to open up underneath for two. They opened up a lot for Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua over the middle of the field. Uh, the one thing that McVay does very well is putting two guys on crossing routes, the, the high-low concepts. They didn't use that with Higby. Uh, San Francisco. Matt Stafford's going to have to sling it because they're not going to be able to run with uh, Kyron Williams and uh, who's the other fucker? Oh, Cam Akers, who's on the vent. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Um, if Mark Andrews plays, I'll give it to Johnny. If not, Higby. Elijah Moore and Zay Jones, Chris Olave and Tyler Algier. I think that Yahoo's projections are right on the money with Elijah Moore, and I think they're right on the money with Zay Jones. You can never predict Zay Jones double digits. I will say this though. You love the use for him to get out target or out target Christian Kirk by a mile. That's great news. Zay Jones is a good secondary guy to have, a great number two to have on any NFL team. And he's in a shootout with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I don't think Christian Kirk becomes an afterthought, especially in this matchup, because Kirk. Twice when he played the Chiefs, looked very well. But guess what? That's when he was featured as the number one guy on the offense. Calvin Ridley is now that dude. What does that mean? Good question, Harsh. It means that Zay Jones is probably going to get another dosage of seven targets, and he might score. Cool. Elijah Moore, though, look, I understand that everybody is, is oh, my God, did you see the usage? This, that, the other. Dude. I'm not big on it. I'm not. It's funny because I have him. I'm very worried about Deshaun Watson as a passer. And I think that at best this got, dude, honestly, I'm going to say a really ignorant statement. But I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm sitting up right now to say this, okay? I think his outcome this year is what Curtis Samuel that was last year. It's not terrible, but it's not the upside that everybody thinks they're getting out of Elijah Moore. It's Curtis Samuel, 2022. What that means is a floor of 7 to 8, and if he scores 15. But I projected him to get maybe four touchdowns all year, which means you're getting 7, 7, 8, 8. That's all it is. Okay, now we got to go to Harsh. Sorry, it's very emotional there. Chris Olaf without J.C. Horn. Party people! <laughs> all right, all right. Good job, Arch. Tyler Algier. Well, okay. Thank God I did not invest in any Falcons because I would want to kill Arch this week. Not really. But mentally, I like did it in my mind. Um, Chris Olaf. 
No, we're we're off Chris Olavarge. Uh a Tyler Argier. Um, look, if they're gonna use a one two punch, I just think it's gonna be really dude. I am gonna love the box scores when B. John Robinson has two hundred total yards, but Algier has three touchdowns. Hilarious. Just thought I'd bring that out there. <laughs> Denver versus Washington. Oh, wow, they're going head-to-head. -head. Dude, honestly? I I think this is a low-scoring game. I think the final outcome becomes like 12 to 13. So I like to both defenses. They, mo they might both combine for 10 and a half sacks. Mo might combine. It it's a draw. Okay, now, now I got to put... Putting money in my mouth, these. So I like. Jo I think Josh Allen will be the highest scoring player in this matchup. Johnny, I'm confident in Josh Allen. I'm confident in McCaffrey and if Mark Andrews plays, right? Everybody else, I am not very confident in. It's just a matter of matchups. I'm gonna tell you right now, Johnny. I think as far as roster construction, Harsh has the better constructed roster. I think you're relying on a lot of matchups this week. Who goes 0-2, Johnny or the Beautiful? <laughs> Man, this is tough. I'm 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 in deep thought. Before I make this selection, I am in a huge deep thought. Huge, huge, huge. You know what? Oh, dude, this is so bad. I have, I have, I have to go back and and, and uh, challenge on the play and review. So if Justin Herbert connects with Mike Williams, that's big for Harsh. That's really, really big. If Eckler cannot go, Harsh has a very big advantage here because I I actually like Josh Kelly a lot, but I don't think that he can hold up. In a game plan perspective, I like he might not get hurt, but you know what? You know what? Screw it. I'm not going to change up. I I actually think that Josh Allen will have a good game. I think that Christian McCaffrey will have a good game. And if I look at Harsh's receivers that he drafted, Metcalf, Williams, and Olave, I think have a greater chance of scoring than DJ Moore, Nico Collins, Elijah Moore, and Zay Jones. As far as the running backs are concerned, that's where Harsh is very weak at. But oh god, dude, why are why are you doing this to me? All right. Bottom line is this. Bottom line is this. If Mark Andrews is out again, Johnny is not winning this game. I think Johnny has a chance to win if Mark Andrews is in it, obviously, but. I think what it comes down to is, you know what? Here we go. If Herbert connects with Mike Williams, that's a big advantage for Harsh. If if I assume that Metcalf does his thing against Detroit like he did last year, and a lot of they should feast. <laughs> but if Mark Andrews cannot go, I don't think Johnny can win. But I love how Allen, I think if Allen goes off, he's going to have to cover Rashad White's ass because you know he's getting five points again. And I also think that Elijah Moore is just a guy who can get seven to eight. Bottom line, if Mark Andrews plays, it will be a competitive matchup. But I think the running backs, as good as McCaffrey is, here's the deciding factor. If Eckler does not play and you look at Damian Pierce and Jamal Williams and, and very touchdown-friendly matchups, I got to give it to Harsh. That's even with, that's even with Mark Andrews in. There, I said it. I think bottom line, it comes down to touchdowns. And I think Harsh will probably have more touchdowns in this one than Jonathan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Okay. Honey Bijan with Eminem's dough. Hey, baby. Taking on David Raya. 
Tua versus Kirk Cousins, give me Tua. I know it's New England, but give me Tua. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me Tua. The oh wow. Uh both Buccaneers receivers getting the nod versus Amari Cooper and Juju Smith Schuster. First of all, I am not big on any of these guys. I don't like Godwin. I don't like Evans. I don't like Cooper, and I don't like Juju Smith Schuster. Which one do I like more? Probably the Buccaneers guys are hedging off of each other, so you can go that way out. <clears throat> Brian Robinson and Ramondre Stevenson. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. Bijan Robinson. I forgot you got both. Bijan versus Green Bay. Oh, my boy, honey, Bijan. Uh, versus Green Bay is a good matchup. Um, Tyler Algier vulturing at the goal line was stupid, and I think Arthur Smith, for whatever reason, is probably going to continue to do things that we don't like. Romandre Stevenson against Miami in a very friendly matchup. He didn't even look that bad against Philly. I think people were concerned. But getting 11 points, oh, rushing the ball was horrible. But that usage in the passing game, those six targets, baby. You hate the fan. <laughs> Miles Sanders and uh, Antonio Gibson do not stand a chance against this really good combo. Give me the Andre side. Evan Ingram and TJ Hawkinson. I like, I, I think the Vikings are going to get shellacked again against Philly. So give me Evan Ingram. See you, Lamb. Najee Harris versus Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry. Well, okay. See Lamb against the Jets. Will do just fine. Najee Harris against the Browns. I think you can run on the Browns a lot more than you could on the, against the 49ers. That's a plus, right? <laughs> um, Jacobs and Henry. Josh Jacobs against the Buffalo Billy, 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 Billy Bills. Nation, bitch. Like that matchup. Derrick Henry, look, I know he got you 12 points, but. Tajay Spears is cutting into that workload on snaps. Uh, the Chargers shouldn't be that daunting. I think he'll actually fall into the end zone here. He didn't last week. Um, so I'll, I actually will go Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry. Indy defense versus New England. I think New England defense will always be in play because they're, they're very good. But it is a tougher matchup. Indy against Houston. Not bad, man. Their defense didn't play that bad. Give me Indy. Indy and Cindy. Ooh. Is Christian Watson playing? No. Okay. Well, listen up, baby. Do you hear me? You know who I'm I'm choosing here. Um Cryer, by the way, I'm gonna make a really hot take right now. You are no longer the team uh the worst team. Uh, I'll give you a hint. A former champion. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say. It. You are no longer in my 12th spot. When we do power rankings, it's a spoiler alert. Unless your team dies on the field this week, hopefully that they don't. You are no longer the worst team, in my opinion. In my honest opinion, you're you're gonna be. I don't know if you'll be shocked, but um, you're not. There's a, there's a team that I suddenly have had a strong distaste for. Um. Yeah, that's all I really got to say, boys and girls. That's all I really got to say. Andre with the dub. Congratulations on going 2-0, oh, buddy. Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. You heard me. You heard me. Let's rub coffee. The A-team. Taking on who? Taking on who? Me. Uh, okay. Rob, you got injuries. I got injuries. I might not have any running backs against you. Um, yeah. Chances are Aaron Jones does not play, which means I'm probably rolling out dog shit at running back. Um. Let's see how we do. Sean Watson at Pittsburgh versus Joe Burrow against Baltimore. I know that people are freaking out about Joe Burrow and that calf and, and this, that, the other. 
I actually think the weather and first day jitters probably got the best of him. He always torches Baltimore, so I'm going to stick with that script. Speaking of, this is a guy I'm more worried about, Sean Watson, okay? Oh, wait, they did get a two-point convert. Oh, dude. Oh, God, dude. Oh, my God, yeah. I'm more worried about Deshaun than I am Burrow. Uh, okay, I know it says Jahan Dotson. I'm probably going to put George Pickens there. So let's say George Pickens and A.J. Brown versus Jeff, Justin Jefferson and Devonta Smith. I know, I know you hate Thursday night games. I love A.J. Brown and I love Devonta Smith both. Who's going to score more? Hey, Jay, bro. No, but on some serious, serious, serious notes, um, I think that both will probably find the end zone or... One will find the end zone, one will go over 100. I think that's what's going to happen. Justin Jefferson against Philly. I know in the back of your mind you're nervous, bro. Remember when he got shut down? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. He got shut down by them last year. Will it happen again? Probably not. I mean, he's the best receiver in the entire galaxy. Uh, George Pickens against the Browns. I'm probably going to start. No Deontay Johnson, and he's pissed already, which means squeaky wheel narrative. I think this is his coming out party. No, I seriously believe that, Rob. Anyway, running backs, okay? It's probably going to be Khalil Herbert, and if Aaron Jones is ruled out, Jalen Warren, which means that they're going to combine for a total of 10 points. Brees Hall, uh, he, even though he got 10 for 127, that leg still isn't good, man. Uh, David Montgomery scares the crap out of me against Seattle, dude. I, three touchdowns in play, Coffee. you hear me? I do, I do. Uh, sh shut up, Coffee. Um, David Montgomery. Um, fuck, what do I do with him? You find him. Uh, uh, dude, I, I, like, have, like, no idea what the fuck I want to do with, like, uh, David Montgomery. And, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're beating me in the running back department, bottom line. Even if I have Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones, if he played in Atlanta healthy, I, I would have loved, but this sucks that I'm not going to get that. Hunter Henry versus Darren Waller. Okay, so now people are saying up oh, that hamstring is starting to bother him again. It is a little bit concerning. Hunter Henry, I actually like, dude. I really like Hunter Henry. Damn, that that man shot up to 42% owned. And against Miami, coffee, I'm going to say it right now. Hunter Henry back to back games with a dead damn betty. Oh, you like them apples? <laughs> I'm going to take him over Darren Waller. Um, Stephon Diggs and Keenan Allen versus Davante Adams and Christian Kirk. Well, Kirk is in a good shootout spot. He if he doesn't if he doesn't do anything here, we're pushing the panic button. Coffee. There's something weird, man. I hope not. I actually like Kirk, but I feel like every time you go receiver heavy, the fourth one you always draft is a bust. I feel like this is a common theme with you. Um, Steffi Diggs. Love him against the Raiders. Keenan Allen will be all right against the Titans. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? Yo, Coffee, look at the defense. Uh, uh, uh. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today in New York, New York. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm probably going to put Cleveland in there. I think our defense will be really good, but, like, they might not. <laughs> Dude, Zach Wilson's going to put us in bad spots. All right, all right, all right. Just it's time to pick. Well, <clears throat> Brees Hall, they're going to have to rely on. They might run him into the ground, but they also might screw up his entire career. Uh, I think that the plan was to ease in Dalvin Cook with Aaron Rodgers, and now they're probably going to have to rely on Brees Hall because he's our best player on offense. Well, I like my matchups a lot this week, Robert Coffey, and I think your matchups as well are very, very good. Very good. Even uh, when you look at it, they're they're good matchups. But will the A team go zero and two? They're projected to win by sixty three percent, one hundred seventeen to one hundred two. That money is piling. Keep that money piling. Keep the bitches smiling. No, 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 no. Uh, I 
don't know. I'm like trying to digest this, Rob Coffee. If Aaron Jones doesn't play, I'm going to be at a distinct disadvantage. Uh, flat out. Like, because my running backs might not be there. Well, okay. Fuck. I don't want to pick against my team, Rob. Fucking asshole. Um, Rob, you know, you might, you know my opinion, right? When a team doesn't do well the week before, they usually go off the next week. And with that being said, I still think you have a good team. And I like a lot of the backup pieces that you got stashed. Who knows? Who knows? Rob, if Aaron Jones cannot go, I am going to be at a distinct disadvantage in this one. Hell motherfucking yeah. Uh, so that would be a key to your success. Um, I think that you are. But Brees Hall might get the work now without Aaron Rodgers. They're kind of like, fuck, now we have to rely on run, 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 because we got fucking Zach Wilson. His value just went up. Health-wise, I don't know how he is, but Rob Coffee. I will see you at Johnny's party. But we're confident in our guys that we can win. We're confident that we can beat anybody, Rob. But we need to adjust to health a little bit. And I know, and I know, I know for a fact you don't think you're going 0-2. I'll make a prediction. We need Aaron Jones to win, though. I think that's the biggest thing. I keep saying that. But I don't want to say I'll lose without him. But without a running back on the roster, kind of hard to look at that. Adios, amigos. All right. This is a fun one. Be magic. I think you own Paul, man. Like, you're his you're his daddy, I guess. And uh, Patrick Ryan, the fact that you put up 131 with a donut from T. Higgins and Drake London. Let's talk about it. Mahomes versus Jacksonville and Hurts versus Minnesota. Um, if Kelsey doesn't play, I'm going Jalen Hurts by a mile. Hurts is going to bounce back. He's my QB one for a reason. He's, he's a G. Uh, Debo Samuel and Calvin Ridley. Well, congrats on Calvin Ridley because this guy is back. Oh, this is really going to pain Patrick when he sees a former Falcon go off. Uh, Debo Samuel, like, dude, I, I don't like Debo Samuel. He's always in play to score, but like, he's such boomer busty. T. Higgins, eight targets with nothing. That'll change. Drake London, he's going to look fantastic out there, dude. Drake London against Green Bay, like, he is going to look so good when he touches the – I'm telling you, when he touches the field, those defenders are going to be like, fuck, this guy's good, and then they're going to realize, wow, he is a great blocker. You like how I transitioned that there? <laughs> um – I'm, I'm going to take uh, Calvin Ridley and Debo Samuel on the Beat Magic side. Tony Pollard and Dalvin Cook versus Austin Eckler and Pacheco. Okay, the little lightning bug is on the injury report. Patrick, you need that lightning bug because if you don't have it, Beat Magic is looking nice. Pollard against the Jets. They might not abuse Tony Pollard in this one, especially when there's Zach Wilson. I think Dallas D, which I'll get to in a minute, is going to look really nice. Dalvin Cook can also look really nice, but... What about Isaiah Pacheco? Um, yeah, I don't want anything to do with this backfield until further notice. I, I can't feel confident in it. If Eckler plays, I'm going B Magic side just because I don't like Dalvin Cook and Tony Pollard. It's good, but I don't know about that matchup. So I'm going Patrick, but if Eckler sits out, go B Magic. George Kittle versus Pat Fryermuth. Uh, give me Kittle. Fryermuth. Maybe limited, they said. I don't know what that what the fuck that means. Zay Flowers and James Conner. Uh Zay Flowers all day. James Conner is dude. This is this is what I'm look at that usage is amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Five targets and 14 rush attempts. That's like borderline RB1. Like, but it's the freaking Cardinals. So because he plays on the Cardinals, he's always gonna get 10 to 11 and that's it. Zay Flowers will look real nice though. 
Brandon Ayuk, his breakout season upon us. I think after what we saw, eight targets, and he caught all of them, dude. The Shanahans know how to put their best players in. He is probably their best player on offense, not named Christian McCaffrey. You have an empty flex, Mr. B Magic. So that is to be determined. Uh, Zay Flowers is going to be good, but I don't know if he outscores Brandon Ayuk. San Fran Day against Los Angeles. I like it. But B Magic, your boys are on the other side against the Jets, and it's Zach Wilson playing. That can only mean one thing. 40-point burger. All right, here we go. Time to pick. I'm going to stretch out my back for a second. <laughs> um, if Eckler does not play, uh, Patrick, you're going to need that lightning bug because he's awesome for one. And I think the checkmate move might be placed with Josh Kelly. And if that's the case... B Magic, congrats on the dub, my man. You truly are a magical man. If Eckler does play, things get very interesting. I think it becomes very, very close. But ultimately, who am I picking? I am going to go. <sighs> that Dallas D, man, I, I can't look away from it. If Eckler plays. Give me Patrick. If Eckler does not play, be magic. Man, oh man, oh man, you had to have known already that this was going to – dude, I'm excited to, to, to break down this freaking matchup right now, dude. Okay. Before we begin the game of the week, both teams want to know, and both teams, I think, have a lot to be excited about, especially long-term. David Sutton versus A. Will Allen Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, th this, is, this is the game of the week. I love it. 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 I want to actually, before we begin, David Sutton, I found your nickname finally. And I, I when it comes in the fantasy streets, dude, I know your nickname. I'm hereby anointing you your first official nickname, and it's not King David. I get the play on words. Cool. Every time, and this has been multiple cases, every time I think your team is dead and I bury you, you constantly come back alive and prove the doubters wrong. You, sir, are the undertaker. That is your new nickname. I don't care. You're the undertaker of fantasy football. The Undertaker is taking on Allen. Let it stick. I know you're probably hyped about this, but it's so freaking true. Uh, how many times have we have I been here and said, dude, I, I don't know what's going on with this team? And then boom. Just like that. You played freaking you picked up every possible RAM. And three of the two hit. I don't know what else to do. That's hilarious, though. I, if you thought... The, Puka Nakua, I actually thought was a good player. Tutu Atwell, I know he was a college guy. I did not think his game was going to translate into the National Football League. Anyway, let's move on. Trevor Lawrence, Jordan Love. Give me Trevor Lawrence. I think Jordan Love is in a great matchup, but Trevor Lawrence is in a shootout. Your favorite player of all time, Tyreek Hill. DeAndre Hopkins versus Jaden Reed and Puka Nakua. Puka will be good. Jaden Reed, I, I don't really like a lot. He Jaden Reed for fantasy, I don't think is that guy yet. Tyreek Hill. Love him. Give me the David side again. Javante, not Jamal. Javante Williams. James Cook taking on Travis Etienne and Jameer Gibbs. Well, dude. ETN's breaking out this year, dude. That usage is incredible. By the way, though, that Tank Bigsby touchdown was freaking awesome, but I don't care. I love Travis ETN. The Jameer Gibbs game could possibly happen this week. Give me the Allen Williams side. Kyle Pitts versus Luke Musgrave. I'm going to flat out tell you right now, it's Luke Musgrave because Kyle Pitts will not get a pass. Put on his way. 
Gabe Davis should do well in this matchup. I know he didn't do good in the, against the Jets, but this is a good matchup. Romeo Dobbs. You know what? He caught two touchdowns, and it's not a bad matchup, but I can't say that's going to be better than Jamar Chase and uh, Kenneth Walker the third. Philly! Uh, thank you, Alan. Philly's defense versus Green Bay's defense. Y'all already know who I'm rolling with, though, dog. Y'all already know who I'm rolling with. Say it loud and proud. Philly! Oh, my God, man. Uh, okay. Well, okay. So, David, I think the top half of your roster, Trevor Lawrence and Tyreek Hill, are, are, are good. But Allen's team, man, dude, never question this, man. I hate to say that I'm going to ride the hype again, but Allen did that with Jamar Chase getting, like, six points. He loves his Puka Nakua. Puka, puka, puka. This motherfucker got 15 targets, dude. Oh, puka, 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 puka. I, I got, dude, I'm sorry. David, David, I, I know you're, you're going to probably hate me for saying this, but I'm going Allen. 